Human trafficking, as we all have been discussing since morning, is a big menace for the mankind, for humanity, and for Pakistan. And I must congratulate Sayyid Kausar Abbas, Executive Director, SSDO, for taking up this very bold topic. And when I look at him, one of our very famous American poet and his very famous poem, The Road Note Taken, comes to my mind, which says, like two roads diverge in the woods, and I took the less trodden by, and that has made the difference. Kosar, you have made the difference, and I must congratulate you for arranging such a wonderful conference today that we are standing here today and discussing this very relevant issue here today. So I will not take much of your time. Uh, Mr. Mohsen Bhatt, DGFIA, who was supposed to chair this session, is not here. He's not well. So he's sent his officers to represent him. So I'm thankful to all the dignitaries who are sitting here for taking up your time and gracing this occasion and sharing your thoughts and views on such a relevant issue. To start off, We'll uh, request Mr. Zulfkar Ali Meheser, who is a highly experienced officer from the Police Service of Pakistan and serving as Deputy IG Mirpur Khas Sindh in Pakistan. Mr. Meher has served in various capacities in the police force across Pakistan. And I would like him to sit, have a seat and speak from there. You have your mic in front of you, sir, to share her experiences on this topic. You want to come here? Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman uh, I will be presenting the legal framework which is available at present in Pakistan. Uh, in this session, uh, we will be covering these aspects of legal framework, the status of implementation of TIP, the challenges of legal fr framework, and the efforts of Pakistan in combating human trafficking. In June 2018, Pakistan's parliament passed Prevention of Trafficking in Persons Act and the previous law, the Prevention and Control of Human Trafficking Ordinance 2002 was repealed. In October 2020, the Prevention of Trafficking in Person Rules 2020 were notified. From the legal perspective, Prevention of Trafficking in Person Act 2018 and rules have set a solid framework to operate legally against this crime and its organized networks. This is a very comprehensive law, mostly covering all possible forms of trafficking in person. It has a special focus on women and children. The law carries new definitions like organized criminal group, victims, compelled labor, aggravating circumstances, etc. In Pakistan, it was generally thought that this is the subject of FIA. But looking at the volume and magnitude of crime, police was given legal powers to register cases under this act. So now, the under section 8, the last section 8 uh, says that, uh, defines the investigation agency, and it says that subject to subsection 2, the police shall investigate an offence under this act. And the subsection 2 defines that if the offence involves transportation of victim into or out of Pakistan, the Federal Investigation Agency shall investigate the offence. So, by this law, the legal framework, the legal powers have been given to, um, to police, and police is using them. In the penal section 3, uh, the defining offence of trafficking in persons, any person who recruits, harbors, transports, provides or obtains another person, or attempts to do so, 
for compelled labor or commercial sex acts through the use of force, fraud, commits an offense of trafficking in persons and shall be punished with imprisonment which may extend to seven years or with fine which may extend to one million rupees or with both. The penal section uh, uh, further was added section 3, subsection 2, child and women victims. If the offense of trafficking in person under subsection 1 is committed against a child or a woman, the person who commits the offense shall be punished with imprisonment which may extend to 10 years and which shall not be less than 2 years or with fine which may extend to 1 million rupees or with both. So these are the three important sections under which the, this law has set the uh, motion, uh, the inland and out of uh, trafficking issues. Uh, after, uh, with, this, with this law, uh, in, uh, we have registered uh, cases in Sin province and uh, uh, action is being taken in this regard. Uh, in Sin, 488 cases were registered in this year, uh, in 2022, and uh, they have been processed and uh, uh, they are uh, under trial at various stages. Another challenges which was, uh, which were, which we faced in the, in this uh, legal framework, uh, so, to address that, we, uh, we have given training to our Sin Police uh, staff, NGOs, and we have trained 1,482 1, uh, NGOs in this regard. And uh, they include the uh, inspector SHOs, uh, women, women SHOs, and uh, uh, WSCs, the station police moharar. So, Sin has, Sin is taking full efforts to contribute in this regard for the national interest. Uh, Sindh, is, uh, Sindh has also uh, taken lead because uh, Sindh is the only promise where uh, the Sindh Child Marriage Restraint Act 2013 has given set age for male and female as 18 years. So recently we saw at the national level that uh, uh, the in Dua Zahra case or in other cases that uh, it is difficult uh, for a child marriage in Sindh province and in those two particular cases the, uh, the couple went to Punjab to register uh, their marriage. Uh, in Sindh uh, we have established human rights cell way back in 2009. In 2012, women and children protection cells were created all in a whole over province. In 2016, women police stations were converted into women and child police stations. In 2022, every district has a focal person for trafficking in person and it is a gazetted DSP level officer. So uh, we have notified provincial vigilance committees and district vigilance committees and uh, Sin Promise is actively uh, engaged in this national cause uh, for the trafficking of trafficking in persons. Thank you. Thank you, Meher Saab. And it's heartening to know that 488 cases were registered in 2022 in Sin. So kudos to Sindh province for working so much on human rights. Now I request Mr. Azfar Maheser. Uh, he is a highly experienced officer from the police service of Pakistan who is serving as DIG of Balochistan. Mr. Maheser is a recipient of the Pakistan Excellence Officers Award 2020 also. So I would request Mr. Azfar Maheser to shed his views. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm first of all very thankful to SSTO for providing me this opportunity 
to speak with this uh, forum on the topic of the human trafficking in person in Pakistan. Since I represent the government of Balochistan, so I would be highlighting a uh, few facts in the province of Balochistan. First of all, this issue uh, of trafficking in person in Pakistan. Initially, it was in the domain of FIA, but after the resolution of a new law in 2018, this has been given as mandate to entire Pakistan police. And having this new law implemented in country, its practices have started and its fruits have started coming. Balochistan, uh, because of its geography, uh, it shares borders with two of the countries, that is Iran and Afghanistan. And that makes it very complex because it's a very porous border and cross-border movement is very frequent. So the issues of trafficking are mostly dealt either with the FIA or the law enforcement agencies deployed there and in some extent uh, to the police. Because we face uh, so many issues like we have still bonded labor there, we face mine labors there, there are debt traps, even slavery incidents are found in province of Balochistan. Initially, uh, local police did not have uh, efficient and sufficient law because of which the focus and the effort of the local police was missing. But I can say after the uh, 2018 act, uh, this issue is being tackled at police station level. And I must mention here the efforts of the current Inspector General of Police, Mr. Abdul Khalik Sheikh, who has a vision to fight this menace of trafficking in person in Pakistan. And I would also like to highlight the efforts done by the former Inspector General of Police and current DG FIA Mohsen Bhatsab, who has established so many institutions in order to reduce this menace in province of Balochistan. Especially, uh, we have established women police stations. And uh, today, the first SHO of the women police station of Quetta, she is the participants of today's this conference. I have taken her along. We have established daycare center and we have uh, started the campaign of the mass awareness to the people and community of the Balochistan. And new police stations are also being established. Like recently, we established a woman police station in Turbat. And subsequently, it will be established in Gawadar and Sibi districts of the Balochistan. Why I'm focusing and emphasizing on this because these are the true steps that need to be taken for the long sustainable resolution of such kind of issues that we face. Without infrastructure, without sufficient knowledge and without capacity building, police department may not come up to the expectations. So that's why we need to develop such sort of alternates and forums where such cases should be reported. Our police, down to the police station level, the head murderers and investigation officers, they are being trained in this regard on the new laws, implementation of new laws, and subsequently the prosecution of these laws. So capacity building is being increased. Issues are being uh, taken at very highest level. 
and i am hopeful that in near future the issues of the trafficking in person in balochistan will be dealt desirably uh, at the end i must thank uh, the forum for providing me opportunity to speak to you i thank you all thank you asfar mehsar saab it's heartening to know the progress being made in balochistan now I'd invite mr zaibullah khan who is currently serving as dig investigation khyber pakhtunkhwa he holds extensive experience in the police service of pakistan and has also served as a deputy commandant special security unit so may over to you mr zaibullah khan اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آنریبل لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین السلام علیکم کمنگ فرام دا پروونس آف خیبر پختونخوا ہیونگ اٹس پیکولیئر بیک گراؤنڈ اینڈ ٹریڈیشنس آئی ووڈ رادر Uh, like to talk uh, generally on this issue and topic because uh, many speakers uh, have talked about it uh, since morning and uh, i'm feeling very hard to find uh, any more addition to this subject khyber <clears throat> pakhtunkhwa police uh, is trying its level best to cope uh, with this menace uh, of uh, trafficking in person uh, previously called human trafficking but uh, after the united nations convention when it was passed uh, the name was given trafficking in person khyber pakhtunkhwa police uh, like uh, my other fellows and colleagues uh, pointed out in their own respective provinces that uh, they are uh, uh, trying their level best uh, to work on different aspects of this issue kp police uh, has also uh, worked on it very hard and uh, like uh, establishment of women police stations uh, training of uh, investigation officers and especially after the enactment of 2018 uh, uh, trafficking in person act uh, the things uh, became uh, a little bit clear <clears throat> because before that uh, probably there were two sections in pakistan penal code that was 370 and 371 which worked uh, uh, to cope with uh, child labor forced labor human trafficking all these things uh, they were taken collectively under those two sections or maybe a few more but after the enactment uh, of uh, trafficking in uh, person act uh, 2018 uh, things have become very clear and uh, uh, have come down to the demand of uh, the police also khyber <clears throat> pakhtunkhwa police uh, is not only working uh, uh on uh, provincial level but it has gone down to the regional level district level police station level and uh, some very experienced officers uh, have been assigned the task to look into all these things and uh, uh again uh, some uh, different uh, stakeholders like uh, prosecution judiciary Uh, federal investigation agency we are actively engaging uh, with all these departments uh, to sort out uh, some problems especially the proper investigation of the cases and the conviction rate which is very important at the end unfortunately that is still very low but we are trying our level best to bring it to an acceptable level and uh, for the difference to be seen on ground we are conducting capacity building courses like uh, some of my other colleagues also pointed out that uh, has been uh, uh, made uh, uh, part of the curriculum also 
uh, I believe uh, from the next uh, uh, year, uh, uh, the curriculum uh, will definitely be added uh, with uh, this specific topic and uh, it will be taught at all levels from constable to the DSPs in different uh, police training institutions. <clears throat> In addition uh, to all uh, this, uh, our senior leadership uh, of the province is also focusing very hard on all these things. Uh, inshallah, uh, we can uh, tell uh, this uh, uh, August audience that uh, we'll give you uh, some uh, very concrete uh, progress uh, and uh, the difference will be seen, inshallah. Uh, last but not the least, uh, I would uh, like to add uh, my uh, very personal opinion, if I'm allowed, uh, that uh, until and unless on regional level, global level, or you can take it anyway, but we have to do away with uneven distribution of wealth if we want to go further on this topic and on this subject. We need to look for the core uh, problem and try to uh, solve it and find uh, some solutions uh, out of it. And uh, uh, this cannot be done only by the law enforcing agencies. This cannot be done by the SSDO only. It is the responsibility of haves to give something to the have-nots so that we can reach to the ultimate goal and eradication of trafficking in person in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Zaybullah Khan Saab, and I think so the audience and myself, we are highly delighted to know that such topics are being included in the curriculum also. So I think so that's a great step for the KPK police and other sensitive topics like gender minorities and what is happening in other parts of Pakistan to them should also be a part of the curriculum. To move further, I would now request uh, Mrs. Nida Chatha, SSP Punjab Police, to come here and share her views. And it's very heartening to, so, uh, to see women at all levels in Pakistan. So big round of applause for Mrs. Nida Chatha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you very much, SST, SSDO, for inviting uh, all the uh, many of the police officials from all the provinces. As policing is a provincial subject, so it's very uh, nice to see that uh, what are the implementation mechanism related to trafficking in person act uh, in all the provinces of Pakistan. So as far as Punjab is concerned, uh, I would like to uh, discuss few things uh, with the, uh, all the uh, guests present here. That uh, at present, Trafficking in uh, Person Act is implemented uh, throughout uh, Punjab and many cases are being registered. But uh, many sections of uh, uh, PPC, Pakistan Penal Code, uh, come under the ambit of uh, this uh, forced prostitution and uh, uh, bonded labor uh, 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 things, uh, which are being registered previously. Uh, uh, this act was being uh, implemented or enacted in Punjab. Uh, but at present, uh, most of the cases that are being registered um, under this act uh, are related to uh, uh, forced prostitution. Uh, so it is being implemented in Punjab related uh, to the act of forced prostitution, but still a lot uh, to be, uh, needs to be done related to forced labor and especially the domestic labor uh, of underage uh, workers in Punjab. And um, uh, this is uh, uh, the main uh, uh, points that we need to be focused on uh, in Punjab. And the second thing, uh, the mis missing linkages that we are facing in Punjab are the rehabilitation of these uh, uh, forced uh, labor workers and uh, uh, the people or the women who have been indulged in forced prostitution. 
we are lack lacking these rehabilitation centers and unfortunately in Pakistan the victim support programs are not being taken due consideration uh, and uh, the uh, coordination between the law enforcement agencies and other uh, 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 NGOs is um, again the main missing link. We all are working in our personal capacity a lot but since uh, there is lack of coordination among the departments, which is the ma main thing, these things are not being highlighted and no, don't have a very uh, solid impact within the Pakistan. So we need to work in that. Um, as uh, uh, far as uh, uh, we know that uh, if the, uh, this uh, labor um, or trafficking is concerned within Pakistan, it's the ambit of police. And if it's uh, outside Pakistan, or uh, from outside to within Pakistan, it's the ambit of F FIA. But there are again some capacity issues uh, related to FIA. And uh, again, there are the capacity issues related to uh, district police regarding uh, the trickle down effect is not that um, uh, impactful that it is to be um, considered. Uh, when it comes to the investigating officers from all the 40 uh, districts of Punjab, so uh, there is lack of some capacity building related to our investigating officers that we need to uh, focus on. Uh, also, if we are giving uh, FIR against uh, under this act, what to do with the victims? And uh, mostly the victims are being forced into this labor and prostitution by their legal guardians because of the poverty. So we cannot... Uh, break this vicious circle of all these crimes until we have to focus on the rehabilitation of these victims and the persons who are being uh, forced into the labor. So we need to also work, all the civil society members are present here, parliamentarians are present here. We need also to focus on the vocational training programs of these victims if we really want to bring an impact and change within Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you, Nida, for enlightening us. Now, I would like to invite Muhammad Alam Shanwari Sahib to come on the stage. Mr. Alam Shanwari is Director Anti-Human Smuggling. He has served for more than 23 years in Sindh, KPK, Federal Government and UN. He is Shevening Scholar, MSc, Countering Organized Crime and Terrorism. And he is a US alumni also. And he has much more in his plate, but we would uh, request him to come on the stage and enlighten us with his points. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. I would like to thank the SSDU for inviting me to this workshop on human trafficking in person. Uh, on behalf of the DG, I would uh, be presenting this uh, talk because the DG himself was uh, to come here, but uh, because of some uh, uh, emergent circumstances, he was unable to come and he has uh, asked me to convey um, uh, apologies for uh, not attending this uh, workshop. Human trafficking is, trafficking is a com complex global phenomenon that involves compelled or coerced individuals to provide labor or services or engage in commercial se sexual practices. Human traffickers would often prey upon members of marginalized communities and other vulnerable individuals, including children. The practice is very much prevalent in Pakistan where instances of human trafficking are reported to the law enforcement agencies, different departments, organizations, and highlighted in the media. However, Pakistan has taken a number of steps to address the challenge. The main focus of the government intervention is based on four core areas. They're also called as the four Ps, which includes number one, prevention of human trafficking, number two, protection of victims, Number three, prosecution of offenders. And number four, working 
with national and international partners. With the four Ps as the basis of the anti-human trafficking strategy of the government, Pakistan developed its second five-year plan, which was launched in 2021. The basic objectives of, these, of this plan was to develop and establish vital mechanisms, to develop and strengthen cooperation mechanism among re relevant bodies, capacity building, enhance border control functions, raise public awareness, and develop and strengthen international cooperation. We have been able to make significant progress and achieve most of the targets set forth in the plan by increasing the number of prosecutions and convictions, raise public awareness, improve capacity of the institutions, and provide improved services to the victims. In line with international standards and Pakistan commitment to the international community and following the UN Convention on Transnational Organized Crime, a number of legislative and administrative steps were undertaken to curb the international, to curb the manners of international trafficking. Two new laws, as already mentioned, the Prevention of Trafficking in Persons Act and the Prevention of Smuggling Act were enacted in 2018 with the aim to effectively prosecute cases of human trafficking, enhance punishments for offenders, decriminalize victims, it, and safeguard the rights of victims. Accordingly, rules and SOPs were developed, approved, and put in place to give effect to the laws, fix responsibilities of various government departments, and facilitate an identification, protection, and provision of assistance and services to the victims. Pakistan has also acceded to the UN TIP Protocol on Human Trafficking, which shows Pakistan's commitment to the international community on the subject. Now, all laws in Pakistan on the subject are in conformity with the UN protocol. FIA has already proposed further amendments in the TIP Act, which have already been approved by the cabinet and would be tabled in the parliament for further legislation. The aim of those uh, amendments is to enhance further punishments for the offenders. In order to effectively implement and execute government functions, elaborate mechanisms, me mechanisms are in place as already mentioned by some of the speakers. Now, roles have been defined and performance is being monitored at different levels. The Federal Investigation Agency deals with trans-border TIP cases while local police enforce and prosecute TIP cases, especially relating to sex and labor trafficking occurring within the country. Anti-human trafficking committees have been established at national, provincial, and district level for enhanced interdepartmental coordination and a robust concerted effort to fight the menace. FIA is closely working with international partners, especially the UNODC, to sensitize, educate, and train members of the relevant department to effectively tackle the issue of human trafficking. Hundreds of investigations of the FIA and the police organizations in the country have been trained with the help of the UNODC in the past two years. A number of prosecutors and members of the judiciary have also been trained on the new laws and rules. FIA and Punjab police have adopted specific TIP modules in their basic and specialized training syllabi, while other provinces are in the process of adopting the same. FIA and UNODC have conducted a number of joint training sessions that involved law enforcement agencies, members of the home, labor, and social welfare departments across Pakistan. These efforts would not bear fruit without a vibrant and effective public awareness campaign, highlighting the prevalence of the socioeconomic problem and the need for a collective response to address it. The UNODC and the relevant government bodies have conducted a number of such advocacy and awareness campaigns across the country through electronic and social media. However, there is still much to do in this area and we need to further raise awareness among the public by involving members of the members from the civil society, academia, media, and non-governmental organization. In order to augment the efforts of the implementing departments, Federal Investigation Agency has established a research and analysis center in the academy, which has signed MOUs with leading universities and initiated internship programs for researchers to conduct an in-depth analysis 
on the various aspects of human trafficking and suggest means, ways and means to eradicate the management of society. The Anti-Human Smuggling and Human Trafficking Directorate of the FIA, which I am leading, is already linked with all the relevant departments through its data center for accurate and timely data reporting, sharing and analysis. This will further be upgraded in the coming months with new equipment and software. Apart from establishing coordination structures among various relevant bodies within the country to combat human trafficking and migrant smuggling, Pakistan interacts with a number of countries and regions through bilateral and multilateral arrangements, including the Bali process and the Budapest process. FIA established a number of focal offices in different countries and cooperate with other countries through Interpol, MOUs, and mutual legal assistance. UNODC, ICMPD, and IOM are providing technical and legal logistic support to the IFIA in a number of areas that has tremendously helped us in our efforts to combat human trafficking and migrant smuggling. However, despite all these efforts to combat the evil of human trafficking, we have a long way to address the risks being faced by potential victims of human trafficking. Adverse economic conditions arising out of high population growth, lack of legal employment opportunities, extreme poverty, natural climatic disasters like the recent floods, and a number of other socioeconomic conditions put a majority of vulnerable segments of our society at risk of becoming victims of human trafficking. Members of the law enforcement agencies and other relevant departments are further hindered by the lack of awareness by victims as well as the first responses as to what constitutes human trafficking and what are the instruments available to tackle it. Most victims would abstain from reporting the crime or seek any assistance due to either the social stigma attached to it or to avoid facing long, complicated, and expensive legal proceedings. And there are capacity and resource issues of the departments with the meager resources available at their disposal to provide all kinds of protection assistance services to the victims. These circumstances poses a serious challenge to our efforts and therefore would require a more vigorous and coordinated approach. In the end, on behalf of the Director General of the FIA, I would like to extend our gratitude to SSDU for holding this important workshop and inviting us to share our F the efforts that have been made by the FIA and other departments of the provincial governments and other governments. It was because of these efforts that Pakistan was removed from tier two watch list to tier two on the US trafficking, trafficking watch list. I want to thank our international partners as well for their continued support to the FIA I'm confident that our joint efforts will further improve our ranking and public image. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, Shanwari Saab, for your enlightening speech. And to conclude the session, I would now request Dr. Hassan Sadiq, who is currently serving as additional IG of police, South Punjab, and has over 25 years of policing experience. He has served in KPK, Sindh, Punjab, and in the federal government, including tenures as additional DG General Cybercrime FIA and DG NECTA. He has worked extensively, extensively on police reforms aimed at transforming the police into a public-friendly and socially responsive department, especially as police reforms specialist with the National Police Bureau and the government of Pakistan's Asian development supported access to the justice program and various other reform initiatives. Dr. Sadiq has also authored a book aimed at enhancing gender responsiveness among the police officers. His other key interest areas are police governance, criminal justice reform, human rights and gender, and is also national focal person on combating organized crimes. Mr. Hassan Sadiq. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, colleagues from police and other department, I'm very glad to be here today and uh, to see so many relevant stakeholders under one roof 
discussing this very important uh, topic this morning. I was privileged to have served with uh, some of the participants uh, uh, in today's session and uh, I can share uh, with a lot of uh, happiness that all of these officers who just spoke before me uh, have shown their commitment to this cause in the field, whether in FIA or in other uh, provincial police forces. Uh, this is also heartening to note that uh, all the relevant stakeholders, uh, not only FIA and police, but also uh, other departments are being represented, the civil society organizations are being represented, academia and uh, international agencies are here as well on, to discuss different dimensions of this uh, important issue. Uh, the question arises why we are so focusing on uh, human trafficking or trafficking in person. So I discussed with uh, some of my friends this morning and uh, we were of the view there was consensus that there are two very important dimensions to it. One is the exploitation and other is the human rights dimension because most of the victims happen to be from the marginalized communities. They are vulnerable. So exploitation of their vulnerability, their marginalization, their disempowerment makes them uh, more prone to getting victimized and exploited. So it's all the more uh, reason for all of us to uh, pay more and more attention in whichever capacity we are. It's also heartening to note, and we have been listening this from the morning, and some of those who are working on this issue, they know already that uh, Pakistan has made two very important, significant uh, uh, achievements in past few years. First of all was the uh, passing of this Prevention of Trafficking in Persons Act 2018, as we uh, heard from different speakers, followed by the passage of uh, the rules in 2021, and most recently, the accession to the protocol on uh, prevention and suppression of trafficking in person protocol uh, to the UNTAC. What does it signify? It signifies two very important aspects. One is that Pakistan is more sensitive to these issues and secondly, Pakistan is more committed to adapt to the international legal framework uh, on this subject and also to adapt the best practices in this area. And these uh, best practices have been uh, highlighted uh, by different speakers and these include most importantly uh, that there is uh, now a very clear single law dealing with this issue, uh, which uh, spells out very, in a very uh, unequivocal terms, uh, the status of victims. They have no criminal liability. The victims, as one of my colleagues said, is victim-oriented law, victim-focused law. It ensures safety and support of the victims, which was not previously the case. So, uh, now, increasingly, these cases are being registered under the uh, TIP and uh, the persons who are subject of trafficking are treated as victims. But most importantly, which FIA understands, but uh, it's a little harder for the uh, police officers to uh, adapt that approach that it asks for, and that is the challenge uh, for the police forces that while investigating these cases, they adapt a different investigation approach, which should unearth the organized criminal groups involved in it, also unearth the elements of fraud, coercion, and uh, threat or use of threat, and uh, deception. And uh, uh, also in this case, the consent is irrelevant in case of children, and invalid when it is 
acquired from the parents or the guardians uh, through fraud, coercion, or um, uh, use of force. So it's very important to determine uh, in the investigation all these aspects. And that would lead us to better convictions as we were discussing this morning that uh, while the first challenge for police, provincial police is to understand, and I am glad that there is an increasing understanding among the police forces that it's not the sole domain of, or exclusive domain of the FIA to register and take cognizance of those cases. And that was one reason, one challenge that it was not being implemented in the letter and spirit, the law, the new law, uh, because there was, and there is still, to certain extent, a confusion uh, while we uh, interchangeably use the two terms, human trafficking and human smuggling. So I think increasingly the provincial police and at the uh, most uh, uh, basic unit level, police station level, this uh, awareness is now uh, increasing that uh, human trafficking, what does it in entail? It's different from uh, uh, smuggling of migrants and smuggling of persons. So it has to be uh, further built upon. So first thing that uh, needs to be done is to increase the number of cases, registration of the cases under the new law and instead of invoking solely the PPC provision 370, 371 or 371 in case of uh, uh, commercial sex uh, work or uh, other such provisions relating to forced labor, beggary, uh, and other forms of human trafficking. So uh, more and more this uh, law has to be invoked by the provincial police. Uh, second uh, challenge is after the registration is to ensure that the offenders, those organized criminal uh, gangs are apprehended, prosecuted, and uh, they get the conviction. Only that will create a deterrence. If there is no conviction or there is a very low number of convictions, then the deterrence would be not there. And that brings into the question of re-victimization. I think Nida uh, uh, pointed out that uh, rehabilitation is very important and uh, rehabilitation um, involves different stakeholders, not only the police, but the social welfare department and uh, other government agencies. So for that, obviously, we need a very holistic strategy. Uh, relating to this, we all discussed this morning, and uh, I am glad that almost every uh, law enforcement agency is focusing on this, the capacity building. The most important uh, dimension of uh, capacity building is obviously sensitization and awareness of the existence of such law. And secondly, uh, the understanding of the law relating to and different provision to victims, to organized criminals, uh, victim protection and uh, prosecution and sports services. So uh, this capacity building has to be a continuous process. It can't be one of a single effort. It has to be uh, carried out uh, and I, I know that FI is leading this effort and uh, different uh, police agencies have also shared that they have they included in their curriculum. And international uh, agencies such as UNODC is also supporting this effort. Um, CDO is also, they just shared that they are also working on this. Uh, so I think that uh, is a very important uh, aspect of the whole effort, capacity building. Then, uh, Police cannot adopt the victim-oriented sport unless there are proper referral services present, existing. Shelter homes are there. And somebody mentioned about the infrastructure, I think, as far. So infrastructure is very important for uh, victims of human smuggling. FIA has built a uh, purpose-built uh, center at Toftan. Such shelter homes uh, need to be built across the country for uh, uh, lodging of the victims of, especially the women and children who are victims of uh, bonded labor or uh, sex uh, work 
or beggary or even domestic uh, forced labor. So these uh, services have to be there and for this other departments have to uh, double their effort. Uh, another important dimension is that at the present we uh, have, as uh, um, uh, Alam Shinwais have shared, databases and research analysis facilities, uh, but we need to upgrade them. Uh, there should be a very uh, effective mechanism for data collection, compilation, analysis, and sharing on different dimensions of especially the segregated data relating to age and gender and other aspects of victims so that the policies can be informed, so that the strategies can be formulated to ensure that uh, effective follow-up action is taken. Uh, FIA has recently uh, undertaken, uh, not so recently, I think 2021, the five years action plan, uh, which focuses on increased women participation in different positions. Uh, and uh, that would be a good path to follow for the provincial police forces because the victims, most victims are either uh, women or children. So it's very uh, useful if we have more female officers at the front desk to deal with such cases and also we have specialized specific units within the police forces uh, to monitor, follow up and uh, make the uh, whole process uh, transparent and accountable. Uh, so that is uh, one way to achieve our goals for uh, next couple of years and as uh, in accordance with the uh, National Action Plan of FIA. Uh, Interagency co coordination and cooperation, uh, uh, there are three now, I am told, three tier uh, committees at national level, provincial level, and district level. These are very important measures that have been recently instituted by FIA. Uh, the, the important aspect should be that they are effective in getting their uh, uh, goals achieved, so their effectiveness have to be enhanced. International cooperation, obviously it relates to FIA. Most of the police forces probably would not require because uh, it's, uh, uh, trafficking is mostly uh, internal affair, but uh, in case of FIA, they are obviously focusing on this and uh, we can uh, get more assistance in capacity building, awareness raising, and. And last but not least, uh, another aspect that is uh, needed is private-public partnership for rehabilitation, uh, for uh, the health facilities, for the psychological uh, support of the victims. My colleague from KP Zebulasa made a very important uh, point again. Uh, by mentioning that uh, unless we address the root causes and uh, for that obviously uh, we have to adopt a holistic approach, all of the nation approach, all of the government approach uh, to address the root causes of the, uh, this whole uh, process of exploitation and um, uh, trafficking of persons. Uh, for that uh, uh, I would suggest that there should be a proper strategy encompassing all these elements. Uh, with these few uh, suggestions and recapping of some of the earlier points made, I would thank uh, all of you and my co-panelists for making very brilliant points uh, for today's session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Saab, for your kind words and thought-provoking points. Any questions from the audience? We would like to take one or two. Yes, sir.
السلام علیکم میرا نام طارق افغان ہے پشاور ہائی کورٹ میں پریکٹسنگ لائر ہوں جتنے بھی آفیشلز بیٹے ہیں انہوں نے یہ 2018 کی جو ایکٹ ہے ہیومن انٹرپیکنگ کے حوالے سے اس پہ بات کی لیکن ہم اگر دیکھیں جتنے بھی دنیا میں ملک ہیں اور جہاں پر یہ ہیومن انٹرپیکنگ ہوتی ہیں تو وہاں کی لائن سپورٹمنٹس ایجنسیاں جو ہیں وہ اس میں زیادہ تر انوال ہوتی ہے اگر کوئی بارڈر پولیس ہوتے ہیں یا دوسرے پولیس آفیشلز ہوتے ہیں وہ اس میں انوال ہوتے ہیں اور اسلام میں ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ اس چیز کے حوالے سے چیزیں میسنگ ہے کہ اگر کوئی پولیس اس میں انوال ہوئی ہے یا بارڈر پولیس یا کوئی دوسرے آفیشلز تو اس کے لیے کیا سزا ہے اور اس کی کیا اس قانون میں اس کے لیے کیا بتایا گیا ہے تینک یو جی زیب اللہ خان صاحب وڈی لائک ٹو آنسر تینک یو ویری مچ تاریخ صاحب اصل میں پرابلم صرف پولیس کا نہیں ہے اگر آوے کا آوہ ہی بگڑا ہوا ہے تو یو کانٹ بلیم پولیس آنلی بات کہاں سے شروع ہوتی ہے کہاں پہ ختم ہوتی ہے بینگ سینر ایلیمنٹس آف تا سوسائیٹی وی آل نو کہ وٹ از رانگ ویر تو میرے خیال میں میں تو یہی کچھ کہوں گا کہ ہمارے پارٹ پہ اگر کوئی کمزوریاں ہیں اس کو ہم دور کر لیتے ہیں آپ کے پارٹ پہ جو کمزوریاں ہیں وہ آپ دور کر لیں باقی سٹیک ہولڈرز کے پارٹ پہ جو کمزوریاں ہیں وہ وہ دور کر لیں یہ بات آپ کی بالکل صحیح ہے آئی اگری کہ جو آپ نے سجیسٹ کیا ہے کہ سزا اور جزا کا کوئی عمل ہونا چاہیے ٹھیک ہے آئی ڈیفنیٹلی اگری ویڈ ایٹ اور آئی کین پراؤڈلی سے کہ پولیس ڈپارٹمنٹ میں جو سزا اور جزا کا عمل ہے اور انٹرنل اکاؤنٹیبیلیٹی کا جو عمل ہے میں نے شاید کسی اور ادارے میں آج تک پچھلے اپنے کیریئر میں نہیں دیکھا تو میں یہی کہوں گا کہ یہی بات پرلیمنٹیرینز بھی یہاں پہ بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں تو وہ بھی اگر اپنے پاس نوٹ کر لیں کہ اگر آپ اپنے طور پہ اسمبلیوں میں نیشنل اسمبلی میں پروینشل اسمبلیز میں جہاں کا بھی یہ مینڈیٹ ہے تو ادھر تھوڑا سا دروازہ کھٹ کھٹائیں اور سول سرچنگ آپ بھی کر لیں تھوڑا سا کہ معاملات کیسے آگے بڑھ سکتے ہیں تینک یو تینک یو سر ڈاکٹر صاحب بھی اس پر کچھ کہنا چاہیں گے جی میں اف آئی کریکٹلی انڈرسٹوڈ یور کوئسٹن تو اٹھو لیس ٹو کمپلیسٹی آف دی آفیشلز وہ آر منیجنگ ایٹ ڈیفرنٹ لیولز یہی آپ کا کوئسٹن تھا انوالمنٹ آف میرا کوئسچن جو تھا وہ صرف پولیس کے حوالے سے نہیں تھا جنرل تھا کہ جتنے بھی لائن انفورسمنٹس ایجنسی ہے کیونکہ ہم ویڈیوز دیکھتے ہیں کہ سینکڑوں گاڑیاں جو ہے ایران سے پیٹرول سمگل کر کے آتے ہیں تو کیا ان بارڈرز پہ کوئی سیکیورٹی کے اہلکار موجود نہیں ہوتے یا جتنے بھی ممالک ہیں میں ریسنٹلی ترکی گیا ہوا تھا وہاں پہ مجھے ان ٹرپکنگ جو ہوتی ہے پھر ابھی ریسنٹلی بلغاریا میں افغانستان کے لوگ کے ساتھ ایک واقعہ ہوا ہے تو میں اوورال بات کر رہا ہوں لیکن جو ہمارا 2018 کا ایکٹ ہے اس میں ان لوگوں کے لیے جو ہیومن انٹرپکنگ میں انوال ہے اور لا انفورسمنٹ جتنی ایجنسیا ہے وہ ان کو سپورٹ کرتی ہے تو اس ایکٹ میں ان کو سزا جزا کے لیے کوئی بات نہیں کی گئی ہے دیکھیں جو بھی ہو سکتی ہے تین چار وجوہات ہو سکتے ہیں کہ کپیسٹی نہیں ہے ایک کپیسٹی کا ایشو ہو سکتا ہے ایک کمپیٹنس کا ایشو ہو سکتا ہے اور تھرڈلی نیگلیجنس کا ایشو ہو سکتا ہے فورتھلی انوالمنٹ کا ایشو ہو سکتا ہے دس ایکٹ پروائیڈز دی ریمیڈی فار دیتھ جو بھی بندہ ایڈ کرے گا اس کو یا اس میں کمپلیس ہوگا اس کے لیے وہ پنشمنٹ پروائیڈ کرتا ہے یہ لا باقی چیزوں کے لیے ڈپارمنٹل ایکشن جو ہے وی ایر شارٹ آف ٹائم پلیز وی ایر شارٹ آف ٹائم وی ہیو ٹو وائنڈ اپ اینڈ موو ٹو دا ادر سیشن آلسو پلیز پلیز وی ان دا بریک وی کے یو کین آسک کوشچن ایک چھوٹی سی بات اے ویری اسمال تھنگ دیٹ آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو ایڈ کہ ہم یہاں پر جتنی بات کر رہے ہیں وٹ ایور وی آر ڈسکسنگ دس ریلیٹس ٹو وٹ وی آر ورکنگ ہیئر ان آر لائف وین وی آر لیونگ ٹوگیدر وین وی آر ورکنگ ٹوگیدر we are discussing we are asking questions we are trying to accommodate each other but life given to us by god is very unpredictable one of our valued guest dr mohammad atif ikram dig investigation punjab was here last night with us 
unfortunately by god willing he has met his lord he had an heart attack and he has passed away so the point is that whatever we discuss but we cannot predict life so whatever time we have whatever time we have let's put it in a productive manner and do something substantial so that the coming generations can benefit i want to thank all the audiences um uh, for the guests especially special note of thanks to all of you who took out their precious time and came here and joined us especially the law enforcing uh, enforcing agencies and their people from different departments and uh, we'll join in for a group photo and then we'll move on to the next session so there you have to add something